Hopefully the camera and the microphone on my phone is picking up. If you listen to the truck idle, you can hear a thud. Obviously we have an injector that is not firing correctly. This is a 2001 7.3 diesel. What I've built is called a breakout box and it allows you to shut off an injector one by one as you saw in the opening part, the cable coming through. So I have the cable plugged in, intercepting the engine harness. The wire comes down here to my light switch box. And what we're looking for when we turn off an injector is the engine to stumble, obviously, because we've lost an injector. During this testing phase, we're looking for the switch that, or the injector that causes the engine to stumble the least. That is our weak injector. Hopefully the camera will pick up the sound, but I'm gonna flip off the number eight injector and we'll see if we can pick up the sound. There. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, hopefully it does, but you'll hear the truck kind of feel like it's going thud, like it's failing. So let me try number six and see if we can hear it. Flip off one of the injectors. Let me flip off. Uh, this will be number one. Feel the truck start to shake. You can feel it stumble, and you get an SES light, service engine soon. If you pull the codes, it's an injector failure code. Um, each injector has its own code. You can look those up. But now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the injector that is the problem, and we'll see. So one, two, three, flip. Again, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but there was no change in the engine. Back on. Put you back out the window and see if we can pick it up. Here we go. One, two, three, off. No change. On. Let me flip one that is a prop that is working. Ready? Off. On. One more time. This is a good injector. Off. going to flip the injector that is the problem. And it's nothing changed. So, looking at my breakout box, anyone who knows the 7.3 knows that they are, the way I have this oriented is just like they're laid out in the engine. 2, 4, 6, 8 are on the driver's side and uh, 1, 3, 5, and 7 are on the passenger side. The injector that is the problem, listen up, here we go. No change. Of course, it's number seven, which is the hardest injector to get to on this truck because of the air conditioning box. And it's in the very back closest to the firewall. This injector sucks to replace because it's a pain in the butt to get to. But, looks like I got a big bunch of work in front of me. By the way, these are uh, remands I just purchased from a vendor and they have 63 miles on them since I put them in. It's definitely not an air pocket in the oil system. You can tell by the way the truck starts when you start it up. It doesn't crank long and it, it's not rough at cold temperatures. It's only when the truck starts to warm up. I was trying to get Auto Ingenuity to show my, the purdles, but unfortunately I can't get it to pick up my truck today. Well, and that's part of the problem of running Windows 10, old Auto Ingenuity, and Windows XP in a VM. But, with my last set of injectors, I had two or three that were weak, and it was really hard to tell which one was which. This one, it's very definitive. One more time, seven off. No change. Five. Thud, 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 thud. Three. So, one more time, seven, no change. I'll bring you back out here and show you the umbilical cord. This is the adapter cable I made. Probably can't hear me anymore because of the engine noise. Seven. Number seven. 
number seven is the very back one. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause the video again, disconnect my breakout box, and I'll give you a close-up view of that. Okay, here we are back with the truck plugged back in like it's supposed to be. Pro tip for you guys, see this piece of heater hose right here? You wrap that around the wires. Sometimes these things can actually touch the valve cover and short and cause all kinds of problems. Let's so put that little insulator there just to protect the wire. Okay, here we are. Here's the breakout box off the truck. Here's my wonderful wire splicing. So all of the wires just pass through the connector, except for the injector wires. So what comes out of the truck goes through the wire loom to a switch and back to the other side of the connector. Now your other option is to remove the valve covers and look for the oil pattern coming out of the oil spouts or oil spill spouts, whatever they're called. You can also, with the engine running and the valve covers off, you can disconnect each injector from the harness and test and accomplish the same thing. This is just the easy way because you can do it in a matter of a minute to pull the, the intake off, plug this in, and then kill the injectors. Now when I take this all apart, I am also going to run it with the valve cover off just to verify that number seven is doing what we see happening here with the breakout box. Let's take one more look at the beautiful 7.3 engine. Well, it's quiet and not running. Once again, here's that engine connector. Thanks for watching. Welcome to part two of troubleshooting injectors in a 7.3 power stroke. In the first part, I showed you my breakout box, and I'm going to show it to you again. Hopefully, anyone watching this has seen it, which goes to a plug. So this is the main harness from the truck going to the engine harness, adapter in between. So, what I want to tell, show you guys is you can't always trust the computer. So here we go, I got an auto ingenuity working. And maybe. Cylinder three has failed the contribution test. But we know cylinder three is not the problem. Let me show you. I watched the first part. You can't really hear this audio, but I'm gonna stick you back out the window and we are gonna shut off injector number three and listen to the sound. My hand was bouncing because the truck got rougher. Turn three back on, and it gets a little bit smoother. Now when we turn off seven, there's no change in the sound the truck is making, even though injector number seven is off. That tells us injector seven is not firing correctly, yet the contribution test told us injector three was bad. Let me come back here and show you one more piece in Auto Ingenuity that's pretty neat. If you monitor the Mass Fuel Desired, or MFD, you can see this is how much fuel the computer is requiring for the truck to stay running. So here at Steady State, we're about seven to eight. And I shut off injector number three, watch what happens. See how the numbers go up and kind of touch into the nines? When I shut off, let's try number six here. You'll we'll see, numbers nines and tens. It gave that little pulse to keep the engine going. Okay, let's go back to steady state. Now watch what happens when I shut off injector number seven. Notice I turned off seven and nothing changed. So the truck did not require any extra fuel 
to keep it going when I flipped off injector number seven. Yep, seven's back on. When I turn off one of the other injectors, you can see the number jump as it shoots a little extra fuel to keep the engine running. Boom, there's 10. So you saw that pulse right there to keep the engine going. Let me try another one. This is gonna be injector number four. See that jump? And again, I don't know if this is coming through in the audio because this is my wonderful cell phone, but you can definitely hear the truck stumble and thud a little more as I shut off the other injectors. So let's go for number seven one more time. Watch and notice that the fuel, the MFD, mass fuel desired, does not go up when I shut off injector seven. One, two, three, off. Nothing changed when I cut off number seven. Yet, the contribution test told me injector three is my problem. Sometimes you can't always believe what the computer says or what the dealership tells you when they scan. If I took this to a shop and they ran the contribution test, they would tell me injector number three is bad and then tell me to replace injector number three. Although three is not the problem. I'm gonna come back here one more time and show you my breakout box in case you did not see part one. This is high tech light switches and my mount beefy two by fours it's just a wire that runs out the window and over to the engine well I hope you guys have learned something and thanks for watching so why does three show up in the computer as failing the contribution test and seven is not even though seven is not firing my theory is since injector seven and three fire right next to each other since seven is not firing three has to fire harder to make up for the lack of power on number seven so it is causing it to have a higher out of balance number inside the computer which is telling you that three is working harder than all the rest of them since it's working for seven and three at least that's my theory all i know is uh... when i pull the valve covers off i'm going to check and make sure that seven doesn't have any oil coming out which i'm almost positive it will not have any oil coming out since the injector test has shown that and the mfd numbers also show that but the moral of this story is don't always trust the computer and don't believe what the shop tells you because like I said the shop is gonna say that injector 3 is bad and they would replace it and if they replaced it we would find that the problem will still exist thanks for watching Okay, so I got the passenger side valve cover off now, and I know it's really hard to see in that little clip before this, but as we confirmed with the breakout box and, well, maybe not on auto ingenuity, but we confirmed that injector 7 is not firing correctly, and 
Of course, that's the hardest one to see since it's in the very, very back by the heater box. So we were able to see that the other injectors were kind of spitting the oil out. Injector 7 back here was not really doing much of anything. There was a little bit of splashing that maybe the video can't see. I can see it here, but I believe that's just some splashing around from the rocker valves. If there's any oil coming out of that spout, it's basically nothing compared to the rest of them. So as we confirmed once again, injector 7 is my problem injector. And as luck would show, it just happens to be the hardest one on the truck to change because you could see the heater box here. There's not a lot of room to work back there. So, injector 7. Got a new one coming from the shop. Just put these in and all of them seem to be working okay except number 7. Hopefully I have helped you guys out. I'm going to try to squish all these videos together when I send it to YouTube. So hopefully it'll come out as one big video instead of three or four parts. Thanks for watching again. Just wanted to add one little tip here that I learned from watching YouTube. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you've seen or heard of Diesel Tech Ron. And I picked this up in one of his videos, so I gotta give him a shout out. But when you're seating these injectors, if you get a 5 8 wrench, fits perfectly over the injector hold down clamp here and it allows you once you hook the back part of the injector on the bolt that will be left it allows you to just use this to to pull the injector down into the bore so instead of smacking it and hammering it trying to get it to seat get it close enough to where it hooks on the bolt and then just use the wrench to to pry it down into the bore. Little pro tip for you guys, and again, thanks Diesel Tech Ron for uh, pointing that out in one of his videos that I picked up. Again, thanks for watching.